Welcome to our channel. Today we're discussing the ongoing violence and humanitarian crisis in Sudan, and the steps being taken to try and quell the conflict. A ceasefire was recently put into motion by Sudan's army, with their leader, General Abdel Fattah al Burhan, giving an initial approval to extend it an additional 72 hours and send an envoy to the South Sudan capital of Juba for talks. The ceasefire is also helping international evacuation efforts as military chiefs said evacuation flights will continue as long as conditions are safe. The violence began on April 15, with airstrikes and artillery killing at least 512 people and leaving nearly 4,200 wounded. The World Health Organization reported that only 16% of health facilities are functioning in Khartoum and said those still functioning are facing shortages of medical supplies, power and water. The crisis has caused an estimated 50,000 acutely malnourished children to have their necessary treatments be disrupted, raising concerns about an escalating ethnic tensions. Furthermore, the UN Refugee Agency estimated that 270,000 people are likely to flee into South Sudan and Chad alone since the fighting began. With the crisis causing such immense suffering among civilians, the U.S. Secretary of State, Antony Blinken, and the African Union Commission Chairman, Mosa Faki Mohamad, are discussing ways to bring a sustainable end to the fighting and restore the nation to peace. However, the unrest has been linked to 79-year-old former dictator, Omar al-Bashir, who was overthrown in 2019 and transferred from prison to a military hospital with five of his former officials before hostilities started. Thousands of inmates have also been released, including a former minister in Bashir's government, who like him is wanted on war crimes charges. At this time, it's uncertain when the suffering of many in Sudan will be eased, as the nation awaits a response from the rapid support forces and other regional blocs about extending the ceasefire. We hope an agreement is reached so that civilians and refugees can flee the violence and begin to rebuild their lives. That's all for now. Thanks for watching, and check back soon for more updates on the crisis in Sudan.